go. Just updating this overlay so people can see what's going on. Uh, Afro Mew, Afro Moo. <laughs> it's stuck in the lot. Afro Mew, the the cat version of Afro Moo. Afro Moo stuck in the queue right now. That rhyme made that a lot harder to say than I was expecting. It's too early. It's too early. It's okay. I'll I'll get it. I'll get it over the course of the day. Afro Mew, Afro Mew, Afro Mew. the Neko AD. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, right yeah, now server yeah, issues are uh, pretty chaotic. It's it's weird because this used to be the case like a year and a half ago, and then all of a sudden this past weekend everything just kind of exploded. Yeah. It's, uh, I gotta say, everybody's, I, I saw people calling for stuff like, stop patching every two weeks, we don't, we want quality assurance, and I'm like, okay, this one, this one was an aberration. I don't, like, I like that they update every two weeks. It's one of the things that keeps me very, very much interested in the game, is that the game essentially changes at least a little bit every couple of weeks. In this case, they did a whole bunch of sneaky behind-the-scenes stuff, and we were down for what a day and a half, really. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not that's not too bad for me. I know it to everybody kind of seemed like the world was ending, but I I have one other hobby, so it didn't seem quite so bad. Uh, certainly, I was opening league every hour or two just to see you know if, if the status had changed. But I, I got to say it was it wasn't too bad, and I'm I'm really good on good on Riot for keeping it together. And we got we got a ten. IP boost, man. Tim went IP boost. That's the best. I think my favorite thing was uh, somebody posting on Reddit. It's like, thank you, Riot, for taking the servers down. I can finally yeah, I finish, finish my school. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, great. All right. That was a good point, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it's good. So, uh, but right now, the login queue, the problem. I had about 10 minutes when I logged in this morning. <sighs> man, I, I got to say... Good. I, I want to see what Lemon God plays because, like, I've played a lot of support and I've got two support crushes. Like, people that uh, the don't people don't really look at, even though they're really good supports. One of them was Locust from Dignitas. He's an incredibly oh, good yeah. support. Yep. But uh, people are always like Scara. Yeah, Scara gets a lot of the credit there. Yeah. Yeah, he really does. And and Lemon God is actually one of my other support just crushes because like he doesn't get that much recognition. He kind of he he had to do real life stuff for quite a while. It's like I get to see him probably not on support, but still like the crush will kind of carry over, just not as much. It does make you wonder though. Do you take Afro Moo out and put Lemon God in? Because Afro Moo, I mean, come on. Or I'm sorry, Muffin Cutie. <laughs> like, you wait, take out like... Muffin Cutie. Other side, I'm, I got Afro. I got Afro Meow on the brain. Right now, uh, do you take out Muffin Cutie and put Lemon God in to that slot with uh, Muffin Cutie being at the top of his game, man? Muffin Cutie's pretty solid, so I don't know. It's something weird. I think Muffin Cutie will stay on support. Lemon God will probably end up catching another role. And if it's balls, it'll probably Lemon God, I guess. Actually, Lemon God's probably going to play AD. Atlanta will probably be in the jungle, would be my guess. Because Atlanta has a jungle experience. Lemon God, he's been playing a lot of AD in solo queue. I've been matched up with him, I believe. I'll be confusing him and Bobby Hank Hill. Yeah. But he's got some uh, AD experience, so I think that's what they'll do. Yeah, the, of course, Bobby doesn't really come out that much anymore, uh, especially after, what was it, uh, uh, MLG Providence, where yeah. he didn't make too many fans for himself. Not a bad player, though, but certainly he's just that, he's just that, uh, you know, that little uh, down. That thing that keeps all of us from uh -huh. being pro players, he's that. Uh, he's still up there, though, definitely. I think he actually uh, he had a lot of real-life stuff going on. It's actually weird because yeah. um, right now we're starting to get into the point where there's a lot of more permanent teams. But um, back in the day, it's just like, yeah, you know, I'm going to play League of Legends at night. I'm going to go to school in the day. And a lot of players right now, they're actually tossing out that school, going full-time. Yeah, but, it's no, the summertime is the best. I'm so happy Solomon decided to start up this Invitational Series now because it... Uh, you know, perfect, perfect time to do it. Everybody's going to be just practicing ridiculous. It's, you know, the, the Team Dynamic guys just got finished up, and they were they were pulling school and gaming at a really high level at the same time. I want to see how the competition's going to step up here into the summer. So, actually, something fun about that. Uh, to go to MLG Anaheim and a Gigabyte and Team Dynamic, they had to miss a week of school. Um, I know a lot of the players are Canadian, actually. So, coming down all the way from up north to play in a tournament, that's going to be a lot of time. They couldn't just fly back and forth. A lot of money being spent. So I found this out. Apparently, Renoa from Riot was helping write letters 
or I want to say Zig. Yeah, it might have been, I think, the whole team, though. Just letters to their teachers saying, hey, this is why we should miss, be able to miss a week of school so we can play video games at these tournaments and how this is actually a really good thing. Because imagine telling, like, your high school teachers, yo, can I miss a week of school? I need to go to the uh, United States play and play games. some video games. <laughs> it's a beautiful future that we're living in where that's that's actually happening. I, I know back in the day I would I would... I would have to sort of finish up school on a Friday if I wanted and then drive something like an hour and a half, two hours to get to any fighting game tournaments way, way back in the, in the early 2000s and play, play my mm-hmm. Guilty Gear, which nobody oh, plays anymore. Game. It is. I, I was a Guilty Gear nerd. I never... That's why this whole Street Fighter thing, I'm just like, oh, it was the wrong one, <laughs> which makes every well, Street Fighter fan mad. There's, there's Blaze Blue, but Blaze Blue just gets people angry when you compare it to Guilty Gear, which... <laughs> Uh, I can agree with. I see why people get annoyed at it, but at the same time, it's funny that they just kind of cloned so many Guilty Gear characters into it. Yeah, it's well, they cloned them, and then in a weird way, because uh, yeah, because Blaze Blue picked up that sort of oh man, this is a this is a a rhythm game fighter, you know. And the thing that I really loved about Guilty Gear is at the top level, you didn't do like yeah, there were some fifty hit combos that you could pull off with the launcher and Guilty Gear, but you didn't do it. Because it just wasn't the way the game was played, so you do eight to ten little little mix-ups, and it wasn't about landing one extremely high damage combo. It was about you know really the fight being down to feel and a lot of things like that. It wasn't necessarily rhythm game sort of stuff, which a lot of stuff has become these days, and makes me pretty sad. Like Skullgirls, I had a lot of hope for Skullgirls, and then it ended up being press your button and make sure you hit it with the right timing and you can pull off a 42 hit combo and I'm like I don't want to do a 42 hit combo I want to I want to do like a 6 hit combo maybe and yeah but that's so, I'm a bitter fighting game old nerd for well, a, actually, a game that nobody liked actually I can we can bring this back to League of Legends oddly enough we can so, yeah so something I've heard so Street Fighter all the new fighting games except maybe Virtua Fighter actually um, there's a big problem where you have to go ahead and do things like practice in training mode to get your combos down being able to just you know do these really long kind of more or less ry- rhythm game things like you said just on command and um it's fun because i remember talking to people on like games like super turbo way back in the day in the mid 90s how did you get good at those games did you practice combos no you played against other players and that's what league of legends does that's something cool about league versus other competitive games how do you get better? You just practice and play the game a lot, yeah. and you will get better. And it's about feel more than necessarily anything mechanical. I always like that, where it's it's not, oh, wait one-third of a second and then do this. It's really, you got to develop a feel for it. And that's always how I like I learned stuff with games, was, was by feel. I never I never went and looked up tutorials. I was always like, what well, feels good? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I like League. It really plays into that a lot. I, I, I mean, and I think everybody's experienced it in League. You have that. You play for the, a million games with whoever's free, and then you finally get that one champion. You're just like, oh, oh, I got them, I got them juices, you know. And uh, and then you stick with it. I hit my first one was Katarina. Funnily enough, I, I, uh, I, I really fell in love with Katarina. I was able to actually get kills for the first time instead of just feeding down lane and. Um, then it was Caitlyn after that, and then on to Leona. When Leona came out, I was that was my switch over to support forevermore. Man. Uh, I love me some Leona. I've been playing this game since September 2009. My first character was just like, Annie, just go ahead, rush a Magi Soul Sealer, which was different back then. Instead of being a, the stumble item it was, it was like 2,000 gold, you got 70 AP, and the stacks were permanent. Yeah. It, only, it only was only up to 70 more Back, back before Good Sense took over? <laughs> yeah, back back when like there was no even idea of a jungler. Like if you did a jungler strat, you were doing something crazy. And the AD carry bot lane, um, it was pretty much ADs or like Annie mid or Rise. Rise who was like the funniest mid champion. Yeah, it was. I, I, those were the good the good old days. I started playing early 2010, uh, and that was back when everybody was running AD mid with teleport and things like that, which is now completely unheard of. You know, it was, we were we were all like, "Oh, Kate mid with teleport, so good! It's the best." Uh, oh, you know what I wanted to talk about too about this tournament? I'm really disappointed that VVV Gaming couldn't show up. Uh, Skilly, Skilly, why? 
I got, and uh, TGF as well. Not as much them, though. They've been showing up for stuff lately. But VVV has missed... They were at MLG, and they have missed just about every other online tournament. And uh, they were Wish previously. And I always... I, I dug watching a good Wish game, because they were always kind of like... They weren't quite there yet. And I was hoping once they hooked up with VVV, Jerry was going to help them out, and, and they were really going to... They were going to get there. And I just... Uh, there's actually been a lot of team That's conflict it. going on after uh, MLG and Gigabyte. I know Legion right now, they're actually kind of in a slump. Um, a lot of Mortis is actually going through a really difficult time in his life, so if uh, you can support him in any way, go for that. But like as a whole, a lot of teams are just kind of like, well, I don't know if we want to keep doing this, and they kind of like kick the dust and look really sad. But, um... Do we have anything for the viewers to be participating in today? Oh, yeah, we do. What is it? Solomid.net slash contest.php, I believe. Steel Series Gunner HyperX, and I think that's it, are going to be giving out some fantastic stuff mm. all weekend long. I've got a message here. Afro is in. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Apparently, the reason VVV's not in is uh, Tsunami and Skilly are out of VVV. That would so be a good reason. For they've them got some rearranging going on. Yeah. And yeah, Skilly, it's actually kind of fun to go ahead and look at a team like um, VVV for not, where it's like, they are good players, but they don't get quite as much recognition because they're new to the scene. And generally, one of the weaker aspects is just how they operate as a team. And it's always fun being like, oh yeah, Skilly, he's a good player, but he's not one of the games. So, I want to see them perform, but I guess we won't today. And, Man. Yeah. So Orbit, by the way. Currently, Orbit, just right. to give you guys an update, we're waiting on somebody from MTW, either either Balls, everybody's favorite, or Smithy. They said Smithy was benched, so I assume that means he's he's sick today or doing something. So um, I assume we're waiting on Balls, mm -hmm. which is always fun. Uh, it's always fun to say that we're just waiting on Balls. He is, is and I love that that is his name. Well. I believe it's that isn't it actually Ballas? Like he's using capital uh, I. I would not even pretend that we're good. That that is his intention. Um, <laughs> yeah, good, that, good, that's good a Ballas. great excuse if Riot sends you an email asking about why your nickname is Balls, and you're like, it's Bal is. It's your fault for using a font that doesn't distinguish a lowercase L from a capital. It's, it's, not, it's not my fault. It's, it's your it's fault. Your right? fault. <laughs> I was trying to be Baliz, which is my yeah. fancy manly name. <laughs> it's good good to get information about VVV, though. I know those guys have been having a lot of trouble. I was just, I, like I said, we, we tried to get them for the GESL. Um, I believe there was another online tournament that they, they bailed on recently as well, and I was just so sad. Because, uh, you know, I well, really why I'm sad is because Anaximander... Uh, my voice is not in great shape this morning. <laughs> I'm all squeaky. Uh, but real Anaximander and that the group that they had, well, they had a group way back. It was Anaximander and uh, there were some there were some kind of not great people on the team. But they did a shuffle and Anaximander brought in a new crew and they were playing really well before the switch over to Wish. And again, I I was happy to see Wish get some work, but I was also sad to see Anaximander and those guys go out. Because uh, they had started playing really well together, and I, I had a lot of hope for them. But uh, I just, yeah, I want VVV to get back in it. They're one of the few sort of old guard esports teams that has shown legitimate interest in in League of Legends in North America. I mean, obviously you've had Dignitas in for a while, but they're European as far as their base goes. I, I'd like to see sort of VVV and uh, Evil Geniuses and guys like that get in on. Actually, as I recall, Evil Geniuses. Um, Epic Gaming, actually, now TSM Evo, was a, uh, they tried to contact Evil Geniuses to uh, join up with them way back in November, but it just didn't pan out. It's it's one of those weird things where people like are not sure about joining up with the game. It's like, do we invest in this? Who do we invest in? And uh, it's it's just tricky, kind of like getting a team to go ahead and participate. Actually, for most up and coming teams, they should be going aggressive with sponsors. A lot of people are just like, I don't know. And they're not going to wait for or seek out people as much as look for the opportunity to fall in their lap. The exception being like Rock Solid, who is now Dignitas, who came out of nowhere and just started winning everything. Yeah. And then Dig immediately just swept them up. Like, we're taking you right now. 
Yeah, and it's. I was happy to see that move be made. I, I was Quantix MOBA manager for a while, and I, we were looking at league teams, but they just didn't want to 